Hi, everybody. It is Kathy, and I love to be selling. Come on in, sellers, and we will talk. As you're settling in, let me know that you can hear me. Just say, hi, Kathy. I can hear you fine. Let me know about your weather. Um, today, not too bad here in New York City. A little chilly. Um, it's getting pretty lively here as we're coming up on New Year's Eve. So if you hear some noise, um, that's what's going on. We have revelers reveling a few days early, but come on in, everybody. Let me know how you are. And while you're settling in, I am going to introduce myself. I am Kathy Terrell. I'm a top rated seller on eBay. I'm selling on eBay for over 12 years. Hi, Ladors. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Christy. Come on in. Um, so I'm on eBay for over 12 years. I started small. I started just selling things from around my home. I needed to just do some decluttering. I figured I'd raise some funds selling on eBay because I needed to be home to take care of my mom. And what I found was I loved selling on eBay and I sold and sold and sold and started sourcing. And now 12 years later, I'm a full blown, very successful seller on eBay. And I'm an eBay sales and social media consultant. Um, I actually have over 15 years also of brick and mortar experience. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's brick and mortar retail here in New York. So I have a lot of retail experience. I sold on QVC. I was a product representative for over six years. So I know sales. And I take all that retail experience and I blend it together with my knowledge of eBay. And what I do is I bring information to you about business policies and running a business on eBay. And what are the best things to do in different circumstances that are going to help you with eBay search? Because what I love is to help your items to get seen. If you get better visibility on eBay, you'll get better prices on eBay and your items will sell faster on eBay. And that is all great news for you, my seller friends. Happy New Year, Christy. Hey, Nick, how are you, Melissa? Great to see everybody. This is what I wanted to talk about. Um, what got me thinking about this was we had some work done recently. Um, we've had some issues with our internet. So our internet provider um, sent a repair person. And I don't know about where you are, but when a repair person comes to us from this company, um, you have several uh, emails and several voice messages you get. And then one of the final ones is about 15, 20 minutes before the representative comes, the technician comes, I get a voicemail saying the person's name. So, hi, Anthony is going to be at your home in half an hour to repair, blah, blah. I know who I'm going to be dealing with, which is smart. It's a security thing. So then the person IDs themselves when they come. And oftentimes when we're on YouTube or we're on Facebook or we're in different groups or we're listening to webinars and we're listening to different people, I may not really know what their credentials are for their expertise. So my first caution to you when you're listening to people first, especially for YouTube, <laughs> but this is also true if you're listening to recordings of any kind podcasts, is check the date of the information. For eBay, again, years ago, something would be a best practice and a best practice means you know, a good way to be doing things, the recommended way to be doing something on eBay would stay the same for a couple of years before there would be a big shift. And what I'm noting with e-commerce, and it's really just because of the speed of everything e-commerce and everything internet, things change quite rapidly. I'm sure you're noticing that, you know, you'll log into eBay and go, oh, <laughs> I haven't seen that before. So things are constantly changing. And something that might have been a great idea even six months ago, but definitely a couple of years ago, there's a very good chance that is no longer a great idea for eBay. And this is also true for social media information. Okay. So always look at the date of the information. Then look at the person. What are their credentials? And it's great to listen to fellow sellers. What categories are they in? And it's not that I don't learn, for instance, I do mostly clothing and health and beauty. And it's not that I don't learn from people that are selling air conditioners or car parts. 
but oftentimes there's different considerations, for instance, on shipping or selling international, or perhaps details I would put in my description, something that's really essential in car parts that would not be as essential in another category. So know what categories that person is selling in. And again, as you grow, I find at the beginning, I really want to listen to people very much in my category. It often helps me to listen to people in my similar life circumstances to me. And then as I grow, I have absolutely no problem. I learn a lot from my eBay Motors people. I learn a lot from my hard goods people. But I think at the beginning, it helps to focus and listen to people that are in similar categories or have come from similar backgrounds, okay? But this is what I wanted to get to because I've really heard some really off the wall things recently. Um, and I've heard it a couple of times. So I said, you know what, let's just bust some of these urban myths or perhaps just to, you know, cut people a little slack is perhaps this was true, I, but, but the ones I picked up, I don't really think they were ever true. So let's just get right to it. And the first one, and I've heard this several times, which is why I'm bringing this up um, and labeling it really dopey stuff I've heard recently is that if you open an eBay store and eBay stores come in several levels, you can have a starter store, you can have, oh God, I'm spacing out on all the stores now, but you starter store, that's a basic store, premium store, anchor or enterprise, which is the really large store that if you are what is called a consumer seller, consumer seller is somebody where you've just opened an ebay account you don't have a store on ebay a store is a subscription you're paying for it so if you have one you most likely know that you have it um, as opposed to etsy everybody has a shop on ebay it's a subscription okay so what i've heard is well if you open an ebay store the alg this is what i heard the algorithms like it and I think they mean eBay and Google, but I'll just say the algorithms like it and you will get better search results. Okay, so now you guys post in the comments what you think. Now, first of all, that's not true. So let's say I have um, 50 items listed or 60 items because you really wouldn't be looking at a store, opening a store until you have like 50, 60 or more items listed. So let's say I have 60 items listed and I'm going to pick something um, let's say mugs, let's say I've got 60 coffee mugs listed. If you flip the switch, so I go onto eBay and I subscribe to a store by subscribing to a store, your mugs get no more search than if you do not have a store. Okay. Now that being said, and this is, this is why perhaps the person's hearing it, but they may only be hearing half the story, which is also why listen very carefully you guys know this just from watching movies and reading books. If somebody is describing what a store with the benefits of an eBay store, and you just take maybe two or three sentences out of a 10 minute discussion, you can, you can distort what they're trying to say. So this is my thought. So I have 50 coffee mugs. I get a store. You do not have any more search for your mugs just by flipping the switch. So by handing eBay money, you are not getting better search results. If you think that, it is wrong. Now, this is what an eBay store can do for you. Because you have an eBay store, you might be encouraged to list more. Normally, if I have 50 listings and if I go to 80 or 90 listings, or a hundred listings or more, I will get more sales. Why? Because I have more items listed. If I have more items listed, I have that many more opportunities to get a sale. It also attracts more shoppers, not because I have a store. It is because I have more listings. Do you understand? I'm, I, I know this may seem very um, simplistic. I don't mean it to be, I just don't, you know what it is, is, you know, you get slow sales or you're a newer seller or you're an experienced seller and you're going through a slow patch and you're looking for that switch that you can flip to turn on sales. And I'm here to tell you there isn't one, but there are things you can do to help yourself. So if you are a newer seller, you know, don't let somebody talk you into opening a store when you're not ready. If you only have 20 or 30 listings, um, 
you're most likely best to not have a store. When you do get up around 60, 70, yes, it can encourage you to list more. There are parts of your eBay store, your store description, your store categories, which can help you. But by flipping the switch and getting a store, you do not get any more search juice than without a store, but it encourages you for more listings. You do get what is called search engine optimization, which is SEO, which means search engines like it because you're going to get store categories, which can have keywords and you're going to get a store description. You'll also have the ability to run sales and different promotions. When you're on eBay and when you see slash pricing, which is the price of an item with a slash through, which means it's on sale, that means that seller has a store. So you have that capability. You do not have that capability without a store. So does putting your items into a store flip a switch? No, but it encourages you to list more and it gives you some really great promotional tools and some things that can really help you with your search engine optimization. Okay. So that is a good, good, good thing. Um, <laughs> Dale said she read the same thing. And you know what? I, I, again, I always, I really, this is me being very kind to people um, because I really, and I know what that's like, you know, you're skimming something and you, you just see a chunk or somebody only quotes you. I mean, think of all the novels. If you just took one quote, out of it, you know, rather than reading the whole thing and, and seeing what the whole context is, is, oh, and so back to listing more, will get you more sales. Cause I just want to throw this in before I go to the, the number two really dopey thing I've heard recently is somebody will say to me, okay, I've got 60 listings and I've increased to let's say a hundred listings and my sales have not increased. I thought if I listed more, I would sell more. Yes. If what you are selling is in demand, if all I'm doing is sort of grabbing things and throwing them on eBay without any kind of research, no, listing more doesn't necessarily get me more sales. I always need to be listing things that are in demand. And if you go on my YouTube channel, take a look at the YouTube, watch this first before you list on eBay. It explains to you how to use eBay's advanced search to check prices because you want to make sure you may think something is the great, I, I, this happens to me, I would say at least a couple times a month because um, I'm in New York city and we have lots of wonderful stores and lots of wonderful sales. And I'll go, Oh, this is so cool. It doesn't sell <laughs> or not enough for the price that I'm going to have to pay for it. So, always, always, always check prices. Um, and sometimes it's great. You look at something and go, yeah, oh, this isn't, you know, but let me just check it on eBay. Oh my goodness. It's like, oh, this thing rocks. It's just, it's just something that didn't occur to me would sell. So you know what? Great. Grab it and sell it. This is the second really dopey thing that I have heard recently in different forums, which is, I actually heard this on YouTube, um, is, eBay only wants to show your item a certain amount of times that no matter what you do, your listing will only be shown a certain amount of times that eBay search has like a, some kind of secret algorithm and your item will only be shown a certain amount of times, no matter what you do. I, I really feel like I should have like a flashing sign behind me. No, <laughs> no, that's no, it's like, I don't know where people get these things. No. Okay. eBay wants your stuff to sell. Why? Because eBay does not make money unless we make money. eBay makes money when sellers make money. eBay is in the sales business. Okay. Now, um, I always pick my pens because they're right here. So uh, my nice street pricer pen, my friend Cardi gave this to me. Um, so I have my pen listed. The reason my pen will get whatever amount of views that it gets is because of the quality of my listing, which is, we all know this, right? Title, pictures, description, price, and then also your business policies, return policy and the rest. Okay. 
and desirability. Is this a pen that people are looking for? Are people looking for silver and blue street pricer pens? Okay. Or not. I can have the world's greatest listing, but it, if it is not in demand, and that means that people are searching for it. So Dale and Christy and Nick, when they're logging on to eBay, they are looking for blue and silver pens or on Google. People are Googling blue and silver pens. If they are not, this will not be showing up in search very much. Why? Because people aren't looking for it. If they're looking for it, it's going to go up in search. If they're not looking for it, it's going to go down in search. If other people have the pens listed at a better price, and they're also fabulous sellers with great listings, their listing's going to go up. If I my listing's better, better price, and I have wonderful feedback and I'm a super seller, my listing will go up. So the reason that your listing gets views, the reason you get sales is quality of listing and your price. It's a combination. eBay does not have a secret algorithm. They're not sitting there going, oh, well, Gail gets four views and Nick gets two views. Kathy gets one view. No, they will. Listen, as long as people are looking for that, they will show it. Okay. And this is why your keywords, your titles, everything is so important because that's the information that the eBay, my fingers, that's, this is, this is eBay searching your listing. That's the information that eBay can mine and put into its search engines and Google and feed it to Google. So that Google recognizes, aha, Kathy has a blue pen listed, a blue and silver pen listed, and then show it. So the amount of times you're shown quality of your listing and desirability, not a secret algorithm. Okay. So dopey number one, that opening a store is a magic switch. And that if you have 50, 60 listings or a couple hundred listings, I've seen people that have 300 listings without a store. And I'm always like, Oh, open an eBay store, but that somehow it's a magic switch. And immediately you're going to get better search results by flipping a store on. No, but you get a lot of great promotional tools for the store and you have what's called SEO search engine optimization with a store. Then second dopey thing that I've heard was there is a secret algorithm somewhere and eBay only will allow your item to be seen a certain amount of time. And that somehow if you go over that number, it, you know, it's going to work against you. And it's just not true. It's really about quality of your listing. And it is about the desirability of your item. Now, to help you, what I want to show you is, and I have to remember how to do this. Um, okay, share screen is one thing that will absolutely help you get your item seen is using eBay's promoted listings, which is eBay's paid search. And I'll explain it very quickly. Hop over to my website. I love to be selling.com hover over free tips and the one you want. And I just rewrote this is winning with promoted listings and you will hear different things about promoted listings. What I want to say about promoted listings is yes, you are paying eBay to get better search results. However, you're only paying them if your shopper clicks the item that is shown to eBay, excuse me, click the item that is in promoted listings that is shown to the shopper and they have to do a direct click on the item that is promoted to them and buy it. And they have to buy it within 30 days of that first click. So if they click it and then they come back 60 days later, oh, it's like, please buy quickly. But let's say they come back two months later. No. The cookie, it's called a cookie, which is it gets put on the shopper when they click through on a promoter listing. It's only a 30 day cookie. So it's only going to be there for 30 days. So hop over to my website. I love to be selling.com and grab my freebie guide winning with eBay promoted listings. It's interesting. I have an item um, and I'm going to date this. This is December, 2019. And if you hear some honking horns, I'm in New York city. I had an item 
And it was so interesting because in case, oh, for anybody that's not in promoted listings, when an item sells through promoted listings, when you um, go into your eBay and you go into awaiting shipping, so you'll see your items that have sold and they're ready to go out. Um, you'll know whether the items sell through promoted listings or not, because it'll say it in green, which is great. I love that eBay does that. That is a rather recent update. That's only been like in the past, I'm going to say six or eight months. So if you use promoted listings, let's say a year ago, you're probably not familiar with that. So anyway, I have this one item. I really, if I remember correctly, I mean, I was, I was checking it as it was selling um, because it was one that I had several of. Just about every single time it's sold, it's sold through promoted listings. And I found that fascinating. So what it told me was either that person was searching, the buyers are searching by general keywords, you know, like um, I'm going to oh, back to the mugs, you know, they're searching for blue paisley mug or blue mug or mug for Father's Day or something like that. And the keywords that I had selected from my mug was the information that promoted listings was using. And these mugs were surfacing in the promoted listing. So that's why I'm saying is you will show up in searches when you use eBay promoted listings that are not just the main search. That's why I want you to grab this tip sheet and get savvy on promoted listings. Everybody always thinks of eBay search as what's called the main river, which is the main flow on eBay in the center page. But there's all kinds of places that eBay can place your item for shoppers to see. Uh, one of them is as they're checking out. So they'll be buying, you know, back to the mugs, they'll be buying a green mug. And then eBay will say, oh, have you taken a look at that of this? And they will show them a blue mug that will go really well with the green mug. Or if they're buying a mug, maybe they would like um, a tea cozy, or maybe they'd like a spoon rest. I'm trying to think of accessories that would go with mugs. Um, maybe a mug shelf, a display shelf of some kind. So that's why your keywords and understanding how promoted listings works is really important because you want eBay to have the data and they're pulling it out of your listing that they're going to showcase your items well in promoted listings. Yes, you absolutely want to showcase well in best match and in the main river, but you also want eBay to have all the information on your items so they can showcase you when you enroll in promoted listings all over the eBay sites. And she's saying cookie that tracks the buyer ends. Um, I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, hang on a second. First statement about promoted listings. Customer buying within 30 days. It doesn't mean the promoted listings ends in 30 days, does it? No, Georgia, it doesn't, honey. Um, your, your, your listing is up no matter what. The cookie is when you um, put an item into promoted listings. When a customer, and it's a good question, when a customer clicks on, so back to my pen, where'd it go? So they click the pen. A cookie goes on that customer. eBay knows that they have clicked this pen and they know that they've clicked it through promoted listings. And Georgia, grab the guide because it's going to help you. Um, it lasts for 30 days. So again, if they come in and buy it after 60 days, and I've done that, I've looked at things, I've thrown things in my shopping cart. I'm just not ready to buy it yet. And I may have clicked through on a promotion but I'm buying it after the 30 days, then you don't pay the promoted listing fee because the cookie is only on for 30 days. Okay. So that's my information for you. So hop over to my website. I love to be selling.com and grab winning with promoted listings because you want your listings to be showcased by eBay all over ebay.com. Cause that is a way for you to stand out and search and you do not need an eBay store to use promoted listings. You do need to be above standard and most sellers are, um, but it's no longer a criteria. And again, when promoted listings started originally, gosh, I think it's like over two years now, you did need to be an eBay store owner or a top rated seller. And that changed in the past year. Now it's just above standard. So grab that guide, get busy, use promoted listings because that is something that can elevate you in search and search all over eBay. Great. I'm Kathy and I love to be selling. Bye-bye everybody.